Welcome to Grim 3D for another Modification Monday. Today we are going to be upgrading the firmware on the Maker Select Plus. So stick around, you won't want to miss it. So the firmware on the Maker Select Plus is comprised of two parts. The first part is a firmware for the LCD screen itself. On the Maker Select Plus, the LCD is like a little computer that runs kind of on its own. The second part is the actual main board that we'll be upgrading through Octoprint. Both parts require that you download files and the LCD requires that you copy those files to a micro SD card that's put in the side right here because I have updated my machine with this slanted LCD display holder that actually has a slot for the side. If you haven't upgraded with one of these slanted LCD holders, um, I would highly recommend you do first of all, but second of all, if you haven't and you want to do this update, then you have to actually take the front of the printer off to get at the micro SD slot um, on the inside of the printed circuit board that is in back of the LCD display. So part one, let's load some files on a micro SD card. So the firmware needs to be updated in two sections. The first part is to update the LCD screen. And here's an example of the new LCD screen icons. I'm here in the instruction book on GitHub, so I'm going to go ahead and figure out how to flash the LCD screen. So to flash it, apparently here, all you need is a eight gigabyte or less micro SD card. I actually happen to have a four gigabyte micro SD card, which should work fine. The files are not that big. I think I could probably handle LCD step one in there where you just do the manual copy. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my micro SD card is formatted properly in the command window. Mine does happen to be on drive G, which is convenient because I could just copy and paste the command line. Double check, make sure it's drive G and then press enter. Remember, it's going to erase anything that's on there. It's going to completely do a low-level format and prepare it for the ADVI 3++ LCD screen software. Now I'm getting close to the end of my of my format of this small four gigabyte drive. This actually took quite a while, it took longer than I expected, um, but I wanted to make sure that I had the proper format uh, structure on this micro SD card. It is fairly old, it came from some camera somewhere, so it may in fact have been formatted for that particular camera, which I'm sure we're not even using anymore. So there it is, I'm done with the format. Close the command window and move to step one, which first requires downloading the downloading the zip file for the LCD update files. So I grab that. And I save the zip file. Then I am going to unzip the file like it says. There's my zip file that I need to unzip. So I'm going to open that up. Since I want the folders in this same, the files in this same folder, I'm going to open it up in a new window. Uh, and then I am going to just grab all of these files and put them in the folder in my Maker Select modification folder. And there we go. Those are the files that need to be written. And I would assume directly. According to the instructions, they need to be written directly to the micro SD card that I just formatted. Now, I don't have to do the LCD disassemble. If you check out 
my videos. There's a link down on the bottom to my video of adding the slanted LCD uh, upgrade. And the slanted LCD upgrade has actually a port on the side so that I can put in the micro SD card without uh, removing the LCD screen at all. I wanted to do the slanted LCD screen first because uh, if there are updates, important updates for this ADVI3 uh, firmware, I want to be able to install those without disassembling my printer every single time. So now that I have my own micro sd card ready to go i think i'm ready to move to the actual flashing stage of part one here of the lcd screen so stay tuned so here's my micro sd card files on it ready to go the instructions say that you need to have your printer off and then you put this in and you turn your printer on and the lcd should flash through all of the new firmware icons and screens one after the other. It takes a couple of minutes. So here we go. So the printer is unplugged. The LCD screen is off. Got my micro SD card. I'm going to put it in the slot on the side. They do say you may need a pair of pliers to get it in there. Okay, I got it in and it's clicked. Now I'm going to plug the printer back in. We should see the LCD screen run through the new information, one screen at a time, one after the other. It's coming up. There we go. ADVI. Three plus plus. It's loading all of the new icons off of the micro SD card into the onboard memory. And now it looks like it's done. On to part two. So the first part of part two is we have to find the files, download the files, and then we're going to have to set up our Octoprint to update the firmware uh, through its USB connection to the computer. So on the computer right here, we have part two, the instructions. Uh, these are on GitHub. First thing we need to do is download the firmware from the releases page, the newest version. So we can go there. And since I am not trying to install a BL Touch, I don't need the BL Touch one. I need the main board one 3.0.2.hex. So I'm going to go ahead and download that to the folder I have set up for it already. I'm going to save it in there. Back to the instructions. Now we are not going to, I am not going to flash using Cura, even though I do use Cura. Um, I have my Octoprint set up in the USB port, so I'm just going to use Octoprint rather than work all my wires all over the place and get my printer close enough to the computer, so I'm going to skip here to mainboard option two. Apparently we need a plug-in. So over here in my Octoprint instance, I am going to punch the settings, going to go down to my plug-in manager. I'm going to get more. And I'm going to search, like it says in here, search for updater. Here's my firmware updater. I'm going to install that. It's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm 
it's going to take its sweet time. And it's going to ask for a restart. Now, once it restarts, it looks like there are some uh, settings that we have to do in the plugin. We have to configure the plugin itself. So we reload our Octoprint instance. Here we are, it looks like we're connected. No, we're not connected. So we're gonna to need to connect. We are connected. Now that I have the plugin installed, I'm going to go ahead and install the new firmware. So I'm gonna follow the directions for the firmware updater here. I'm gonna go into my wrench. I am going to Go down here to my firmware updater. Now, remember, before you can do this, you have to you have to port into your Octoprint on your Raspberry Pi, and you have to install AVR Dude, which I have already done. So I don't know that I can show again how to do that, but there are a lot of great other videos on how to get that AVR Dude installed properly. So I'm going to follow the directions here. I'm going to hit this. We are going to set up our file, which is in our ADVI3. Set that up. So we're going to go into our options here. And we're going to put it on our AVR dude. AT Mega 2560. The path to AVR Dude on my Pi where I have it installed and wiring, and I'm all set to go with that. I'm going to hit save. And I'm just going to click flash from file. Flashing process may take up to 30 seconds. And there I have it, flash is successful. And I'm going to click on save as it says in the instructions right here. And then my printer, it says, would need to be reconnected, but looks like it's already still connected. So I should be pretty much done with flashing this firmware. Uh, let's check it out and see how it works. Let's just try really quick some controls. Let's check out and see if it's going to move for me. Z. There we go. Um, I'm going to punch the extruder because I'm not heated up. There's Y, there's X, send that back to home. Looks like everything's working pretty good here. Uh, I'm gonna mess around with the rest of these functions later on. I'll put up some more videos for some of the new functions that ADVI 3++ has. Uh, so, that's in a future episode. Well, there you have it. An update to a brand new two-part firmware, ADVI 3++. I hope it's going to be awesome. I haven't tried it before, so you're on this journey with me. Remember, subscribe, smash that like button, hit the bell, keep the comments civil. We'll see you out there.